LinkedIn Sales Navigator has this new feature called Account IQ. So let's take a look at what it is, what it's useful for, and what are some of its shortcomings. And as we walk you through this feature, I'm going to use Kong as an example. But first of all, what are we looking for when researching accounts? Well, I want to find out if they are a fit for my ideal customer profile. If not, I have a low chance of selling to them, so I might not want to waste my time reaching out to them, right? Secondly, even if they are a match for my, my ideal customer profile, are there any triggers or insights that signal to me that if I reach out to this account right now, I actually have a chance of selling to them in the short term or near term? And then thirdly, what's my best way in? Do I have to resort to a cold outreach approach with cold calls, cold emails? Or do I have any second degree connections where I can ask for a warm introduction into the account? Maybe there are even some other near bounding strategies I can use to land that first meeting within that account. And then there's a plus one. What's my closing strategy going to be? Can I use a land and expand motion or is my only way in is to sell to all teams across the company at once? These are the things that I want to research. How would this look like traditionally and how does account IQ speed that process up? Well, normally I would pull up the LinkedIn profile of the company, open their website, uh, look for recent news articles and other reports that they might be mentioned in or reports that they have released. And typically it could take me 10, 15 minutes, maybe more to find that first bit of information that helps me personalize my outreach. Because when I'm doing enterprise sales, um, unless I'm leading with a point of view. Unless I'm leading with insights, I'm not going to get a response. And I have very few accounts to work, so I want to make them count. That's why I have to do research. And Account IQ, instead of uh, me resorting to review or research these accounts from multiple websites, multiple sources, supposedly I can do this in one place with Account IQ. So, but let's see to what extent. Uh, and first thing that we see is LinkedIn uh, summarizes for us how this company makes money. Uh, and we can use this to look for the keywords that we normally search for when trying to figure out if someone's a fit for ICP or not. For me, uh, I'm selling uh, enterprise sales, consulting and training. So I'm going to look for those type of signals and immediately I can see that, yes, they're selling enterprise subscriptions. Yes, they might be a good company for me. Plus I specialize in selling highly technical products aimed at engineering departments at enterprise companies. And this company does work with highly technical products. So that's a first good sign. Also, as we scroll down, we see um, their what their strategic priorities could be the listing out some sources. And I can see that they just launched a new product. Uh, that's good because that means that they're heavily working on, on uh, uh, generating revenue from this account, right? But here's where you should treat this these pieces of information with a pinch of salt, because uh, depending on on what sources AI finds relevant, it might bring up something completely irrelevant, like in this case, uh, pet products, which this company has nothing to do with. But let's see what else is in here. Uh, another thing is uh, the same mistake that we saw here in business challenges, it pulled up uh, information that's completely irrelevant, like mistaking Kong Inc. for Hong Kong. So all of this uh, information that we see here is irrelevant. So this is where you treat it with a pinch of salt and you want, might want to do your own research on what challenges they're facing. If they're a public company, go for a 10K report or uh, what are they writing uh, about Kong in the news? Let's move on to see what else is new. As I'm scrolling down, I can see some insights on who Kong is competing against and where they stack up against them. But because this information is limited, I'll want to run a separate search, maybe on G2 Crowd to see actual user reviews, which are the top competitors they're going head to head with and how do they stack up against them? Moving on, uh, this is a section that I love, headcount insights, because when I'm prioritizing the accounts that I do go after, I'm actively looking for companies investing in revenue growth and headcount growth sometimes goes hand to head with that. So what I can see immediately is that uh, they're not just hiring to backfill people who left the company, but they're actively growing the company because uh, new hire placement was larger than attrition. That's a good sign. Without having to dig deeper, I can also see that um, the most 
open roles they have is in engineering and sales. And that could be in line with that new product launch that we saw at the very beginning. So let's, so let's recap what we've done so far. So far, we've found that Kong is a fit for my ideal customer profile and that uh, there are triggers and insights that signal to me that now might be the right time to reach out to them. Third step is finding my best way in. And that's a feature outside of uh, account IQ, but I can leverage uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator's Relationship Explorer where I've already added my personas and at an eye's glance, it gives me um, a list of who might be the best people to reach out to and where I actually have second degree connections where I can leverage a warm introduction. But beyond that, this is where I get to LinkedIn Sales Navigator's biggest uh, limitation where LinkedIn Sales Navigator and LinkedIn are still two completely separate platforms. For instance, if I wanted to do additional, as part of my research, I wanted to find out if they have funding currently, I can't have access to that information in, uh, in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I have to go over to LinkedIn separately to find that they have raised funding. And even here, I have to go to the About section to see when that last funding, funding round was. Um, then, uh, to see what open rules they actually have beyond just sales, I have to go onto the jobs tab and see if they are hiring for above the line folks or below the line employees, because I still want to reach out to that account, but my approach, my messaging is going to be different based on what I'm seeing here. Uh, so, so far this helps me identify how to get in, but then there's, was that plus one I mentioned, which is what's my closing motion going to be? And that sometimes um, depends on, uh, on the product strategy. So for instance, here, I can see that they have separate products. And if sometimes when companies are developing separate products, that means that these are owned by separate teams. My question will be, if I'm selling a, a technical product to the engineering teams, let's say, is do these teams have uh, authority to use the tools in their tech stack that they want, or it, are decisions around what the tech stack looks like centralized within the company. And this is something that I want to find out, uh, to, to see, can I use a land and expand motion within the account, or do I have to take a more strategic approach? Uh, so I don't lose, uh, the deal when I'm reaching out because I'll probably have one shot this year to make a business case for selling that account. Um, what else? Uh, so there, there are some limitations that we've discussed. Plus account IQ doesn't work for all company types. So for instance, if you're trying to, um, break into a smaller company, um, account IQ might not be optimized for those types of companies yet, yet again, or then again, if you are reaching out to smaller companies, the amount of research that you have to do will be less. So it's not really uh, that big of a blocker. So hopefully this gave you a good overview of uh, what account IQ is, what it can be useful to you, especially if you're selling to mid-market and enterprise, speeds up research a bit, but do treat the information that you see with a pinch of salt because there can be some hiccups. Hope it was useful. For more tips and tricks on how to master LinkedIn and Sales Navigator, check out this playlist I put together for y'all. See you there.